Here's another really good example of when you're a victim of a Ponzi scheme or a fraud where you don't have to always get your money back from the scammer. There may be other parties that can pay you back. Here's an example of a Ponzi scheme that happened a few years ago where the title company, major U.S. title company, Chicago Title, um, had to pay back some of the money because they enabled this scam by filing title paperwork that created the losses. Investors will recoup 70% of their losses under settlement with Chicago Title. Um, this is something that is very uh, normal if the investigators and the attorneys are smart and they know to look for third parties. 130 investors were victims of the Gina Champion Kane Ponzi scheme. And from the title company filing title paperwork that maybe helped this scam go forward, they're going to get back 70% of the money just from the title company. There may be other sources that get back more of their money. Um, the Atherton investors reached an agreement where they're going to get back $22 million, the highest percentage recovery from Chicago title. Um, these sophisticated frauds use third parties. They use banks, title companies, accountants to help legitimize their fraud, to help legitimize their scam, and people rely on some of those documents. And what happened is um, the escrow company was Chicago Title, and Champion Kane used the escrow company to hold investor money for the alleged purpose of making short-term liquor license loans. The loans were never made, and that money was funneled into the scammers' own businesses. The money from new investors was uh, paid back the existing investors. The scam collapsed a couple years ago in 2019. The SEC came in and did it. After the collapse, Chicago Title faced nearly a dozen lawsuits because of filing this paperwork. The lawsuits claimed that there were losses that were caused by the title company, allegedly. This is something that may not have been a intentional fraud or intentional negative action by Chicago Title, but when you are a fiduciary agent, like a title company or an attorney or a bank or even a crypto platform, you have certain obligations to your depositors and other people who are being funded uh, by these platforms to make sure you're doing the right thing. And in this case, apparently the court saw that the title company had some liability for that amount of money. Um, so always look at third parties. Look at who enabled this scam, who enabled the fraud. Do a good investigation to, to connect all the dots to make sure you're identifying who's behind it and use that to get back some or all of your money if you've been a victim of a fraud.